So I'm going to begin our lesson the same way I began the previous class lesson, even though it's completely different practice. So you'll get something different from this one. Um, but I was talking about Kali. And Kali is the goddess of destruction and death and time and transformation. She is a supreme protector of the home. Um, she's often depicted very fierce. And because she's depicted kind of bloodthirsty due to her stories, uh, some people are scared of her, but you don't need to be scared of her. She is also considered like the mother of compassion. She is over creativity as well. Um, so she's definitely a person to turn to during times of chaos and change and uh, any type of transformation where you feel like you're basically uh, dying and being reborn, right? So it could be divorce, it could be a career move, it could be a change of seasons for you, you know, many different reasons. Um, but I've told you in the past about uh, the story where Kali was birthed from Durga. Um, the gods were fighting this demon king, and when they went off to war, you know, they gave Durga all of their weapons to ride out into the battlefield, and Durga became pissed because she realized every soldier that she slayed, as soon as blood hit the ground, a clone would come up in its place. So really, they were getting nowhere in the battle, and due to her anger from this, and this realization that Kali was birthed from her brow and Kali having this knowledge knew what to do. She would slay one of the soldiers, she would catch the blood so it didn't hit the ground, therefore a clone was not born and she was able to defeat this demonic king creating this savageness. And uh, there's a different story about how Kali was birthed. And I wanna share the other story. The other story goes that there was this uh, demonic king who was terrorizing all the men. And the men were getting frustrated and they discovered that they only could survive if a woman was to take this demon out. And so they ended up going to Shiva's wife, Parvati. And they asked Parvati, could you help us? We need a woman to step in and take care of this. And she decided to jump into her husband's throat. Now, a number of months ago, I told you about the turning of the ocean of milk, where the demons and the gods were trying to get the elixir of life from the ocean. The first thing that came up out of the ocean was poison. And Shiva drank it in his throat to blue. So Kali jumps into his throat. Then Kali was born out of the throat. And she was able to take care of the demon that was terrorizing all the men. So we're going to be doing the Kali pose today, um, which is why I'm bringing her up. Um, we're going to do a flow, and then we're going to restore the end. So we will get some movement into the practice, and we're going to start sitting upright. So feel free to sit on something to elevate the hips, and then neutralize your low back as you uplift the sternum and the crown of your head. Let your palms rest on your lap. Let your eyelids close, turning your drishti in and up towards your mind's eye. Beginning to ignite your breath. Making the breaths longer and stronger than before. Allowing each breath 
to help you to connect your mind and body, but also to tap you back into the soul within. Channel the breath up and down the spine. Feeling your body rise slightly as you inhale. And feeling your body ground more on the exhale. Knowing that between these two points, lies the heart. The heart being the place of integration and where the divine and masculine and feminine meet. Let's join the palms together at the heart. Create your own personal intention for being here today. And dedicate this practice to yourself or another. And then gently begin to open your eyes. And as you inhale, you're going to open your arms to the goddess arms. And as you exhale, your hands are going to come together and you're going to bow your head. And you can slightly round your back if you choose. Inhale, you're lifting the head and opening the gates of the heart. And as you exhale, you can gently withdraw. Inhale. And exhale. This time as you inhale and you create your goddess arms, your palms are facing forward, you're going to lean off to one side. And then you're going to pass through center and you're gonna to lean to the opposite side. So basically doing some side bending. You might even get a pop or two in your back. Mine just cracked like three times. All right, we'll end with this side. And then inhale, come back up. Good, exhale, relax the hands down. All right, now we're gonna come up to stand. Just a little warm up. Feel free to have blocks set up beside your feet. Backing onto the soles of the feet and spreading the toes. You can see the coloration of your mat in between each one. Once you have the bone and joint stacking and your muscles are getting close to the bone, bring your hands together again, remembering the seed of intention you planted at the start. Circle the arms up as you breathe in, and as you breathe out, go ahead and swan dive forward and down to your Uttanasana, your standing forward fold. Inhale, come halfway up, lengthen out through the spine. Exhale, slowly spill back down again. Pausing here. Affirming as you hold, nothing and no one on this earth can hold me down or back. Now on your next in-breath, you're gonna step your right foot way back. You'll float your hands up and come to stand in the crescent lunge. If you need more stability back, you can do warrior one instead and just flatten that back foot. We'll bring the hands to prayer position at the heart. Anyone else that needs to find more stability, please just descend your right heel to the floor. Otherwise you can be on the ball a little bit. So as you inhale, we're gonna come back to the goddess arms, but creating a little slight back bend. And then exhale, hands to heart, neutralize the back. You don't have to round. All right, inhale, explode open through the heart. Exhale, hands join together. One more, inhale, open up. Exhale, hands to heart. 
Now, if you take your hands back to your blocks to stabilize, spin down to your back heel at this point and come up to Baravadrasana one. From warrior one position, try to rotate your right hip and thigh a little bit more forward into the room. And then as you exhale, you're going to drop your right hand back and slowly take the head back. Inhale, lift the right hand, lower the chin so you're looking forward again. Exhale, spill the left arm back. Puff open through your chest, gaze up. And then inhale, bring the left arm up, chin in line with your chest again. Now bring the arms down in front of the chest, keep the feet planted, and just sweep the arms to the right. Good, try not to wobble that front knee, and then sweep the arms to the left. And then we're going to float ever so slowly, inhaling to the right. Exhaling to the left. We're going to do that one more round. Inhale to the right. Exhale to the left. And then inhale. Come back to face the front. Arms lift overhead. Warrior one. Exhale. Bring the hands down. Spin away from the back heel. You can wiggle the toes back. Step forward with your right foot. Stack the hands onto your shins or blocks, lengthen out through the sternum, look out with your eyes. And then exhale, fold back down and in, Uttanasana. Affirming again, nothing and no one on this earth can hold you down for a bell. On your next inhale, the left foot's gonna step back this time. Stay on the ball of the foot, lunge that right knee, float the hands up. And then elevate the arms up, press and lunge. Again, checking here, are you stable enough? And if not, you can lower the left heel for warrior one. All right, we'll bring the hands down to the heart. Here we're gonna inhale, create that little back bend. And then exhale, neutralize the spine hands to prayer. Couple more. Now, to send your hands to flatten the back foot and come up to the Madrasana one. Back thigh and hip rolling to face the front. This time, the left arm's going to drop back, open the chest, lift the eyes. Inhale, left arm rises, chin becomes parallel to the floor. The right arm falls back. The heart opens, the gaze is up. Inhale, bear the rasta one, tuning into the will of higher power. And then exhale, bring the arms down in front of the chest. This time we'll inhale, switch the arms to the left. And then exhale, sweep them over to the right. Try to stabilize that front foot and knee. Inhale, left. Exhale, right. Good, one more. And inhale, Varavadrasana one. Exhale, bring the hands down. Keep lunging the front knee, wiggle the left toes back. Good. From here, we're going to step it into plank. From plank position, streamline your arms. Stay long and strong through your limbs. And then exhale, push the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Now, from Avokasvanasana, you're pressing into your palms, stretching back from the arm to the vertebrae. Let your seat fly upward towards the heavens. And calmness begin to radiate within and without. On your next in breath, we're going to travel the feet forward towards the hips. 
Once the feet travel forward, you're lowering again to Uttanasana. Inhale, coming halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, fall right back. All right, inhale, sweep the arms to your sides and up. And exhale, bring hands back home to the heart. All right, we're going to be stepping to the side. So you guys can sit this way. You can turn whichever way is better. So your feet are separated out. And at first, they're parallel to each other. Place your hands on your hips or waist. Roll the shoulders back. Wing the elbows back, zip up through your midriff, and begin to hinge and pause halfway down. Notice how you have to grip your feet a little bit more to be stationed here, to control your body in a manner where you're just not tempted to go right towards gravity, even though we are. All right, loosen up your hands, stack down onto the fingertips, but you're still lengthening through the vertebrae. Your head is still up. Good, one more deep breath here. And on the out breath, go ahead and bend for the elbows, slide your hands back, and let the crown of the head begin to face the floor. This is Prasaritha Padottanasana A. Affirming here as you hold. And currently releasing all mental burdens and boundaries. And relax. Cast aside all mental burdens and boundaries. All right, when you're ready, walk and track your hands back up underneath your shoulders as you lengthen the spine, even out that blood flow to the face. Stack your hands back onto your waist or hips and slowly start to come up. Good, when you start to come up, we're gonna rotate the left foot 90 degrees and we're gonna lunge that knee. Keep your hands stacked on your hips and your spine more vertical. And then look down to make sure you have a clear viewpoint of your big toe. All right, we're going to hold it three full breaths. Just a different way to get into warrior two. From that third final breath, straighten out the leg, turn the foot in, rotate your right foot out, lunge the right knee. And again, just focusing on the alignment. Right knee's lunging, shin perpendicular to the floor, having a clear view of the big toe, back leg is straight, side waist is lifting away from your hips. Take three more breaths. This will just prepare the hips a little bit for our Kali pose. All right, when you're ready, straighten out the right leg. Turn the right foot back in. Now, once the toes are parallel, you're going to turn your heels in and bend your knees and move more into the Kali Goddess squat. All right, we're going to lift the arms into the Goddess arms. On the in-breath, we straighten the legs and the arms lift straight up. The palms are facing that front door. And as you exhale, you come to Kali Goddess. Good, inhale, lifting. Exhale, Kali Gats. Two more. This time when you come back to Kali Goddess, we're gonna lean to one side, just like we did it with the warm up. Except now we're including the lower body too. Pass through center, take it to the other. You can always inhale center, exhale to one side and the other, or you can inhale to one side and exhale to the other. So however you want to form that relationship between breath and movement. Good, the next time you move over to the right, extend your left arm across your ear. Good, inhale, come back through. 
You can rest your left forearm on the left thigh and carry the right arm over and across the ear. Good, then inhale, come up. Bring the fingertips down to the floor. Sink the hips just another bit more. Just work into the hips here. Also get strengthener for the quads. And then from here, we're safely going to come down to the floor. I want you to find one of your blocks. We're gonna come down to our back and place one of those blocks in between the thighs or knees. The arms are gonna rest down beside the body, palms flat. And then you're gonna tuck and lift the buttocks. So you're holding and containing the block between the legs. Notice when you do this, the legs have to stay active. The glutes stay firm. Breathe. Affirming as you hold. I offer every thought as a bridge to divine grace. As you exhale, gently roll down to the sacrum. Flip your palms open and fan the arms out shoulder tight. Barely kick up the feet. So they're just barely hovering above the floor. Keep the block between the knees and allow the knees to roll left. Relax in the spinal twist. Feel the undulation of the breath rolling up the right side of your body. Opening myself up to a new flow of energy within. So if you were here on Monday, my theme was about awakenings and how it's knowing, it's a feeling, it's a truth being revealed or discovered. And our awakenings can come at different moments in time, sometimes even in our sleep, if we have a really symbolic dream. And someone in my class on Sunday had a very symbolic vision come to her in Shavasana. And she called me after class and said, my vision was me rising and standing in a pile of ashes. And so I mentioned to her, you're the phoenix rising from the ashes. And she already knew the symbology of it. She's been going through a divorce. She just bought her own house. And her son has decided to stay with the father. A lot of changes, but the vision gave her so much hope, so much optimism. And to me, it represented the presence of Kali. Inhale, draw the knees through center. Exhale, land the knees to the right.
Once you get laid out on this side, close your eyes. Come back to connect the breath. Feel it rolling up and down your left side. And I'll let you be with yourself. Remember when you're watching your thoughts, unless there's a message, an answer, some sort of truth, just let it go. Just let it roll on past. Your next inhale, grip in your belly, grip that block between the knees, roll back to center. Take the block away with your hands and land your feet to the floor. Now let your feet just rest here a moment. We're going to activate the upper part of the back by doing a modified pitch. So extend your fingertips straight above your body towards the ceiling. Plug the shoulder blades back into the floor if they lift it up. Now slide your upper arms alongside your side body. Ground them on your mat. Roll the outer shoulders towards the floor and allow the center of your chest to pop up towards the sky. So there is a back bend occurring, but it's not terribly dynamic. Nothing extreme, especially for the neck. Continue to breathe in and out. You are pushing down through your arms to create this action. And now relax your upper arms and allow the back to flatten down. Take a hold of your right knee. And now you can also take a hold of the back of your right thigh and slide your left leg out in front. Point your left foot, single leg lift, lift your left leg sky. Flex to the ankle, strengthen your core and slowly lower the heel towards the ground. And then point. Inhale, single leg lift. Exhale, flex. And lower, leading with the heel. Do this three more times on this one side. Try not to rush it. Once you've completed that, slide your left foot back. Drop your right foot beside it. Pick up your left foot, hug your left knee in, and slide your right leg out. Just be here with this hold first. <clears throat> A half when you release pose. Point your right foot, inhale, lift it sky. Exhale, flex, and then descend it down. Single leg lifts. Doing a set of five today, so four more.
Reach your fifth way back. Slide your right foot back. Descend your left foot beside it and find that block again. We're going to do one more little sequence before we restore. Even though this is a restorative pose, we're not going to hold it as long. Press into the feet, tuck and lift the tailbone, slide the block under the sacrum, and then just rest upon it. <clears throat> so you're in a supporting bridge. So I'm going to let you choose here. You can stay as you are. You can slide the feet out in front of you, but take more of a full bridge. And you also have the option to come to waterfall, which is the inversion with the feet lined up over the hips. Half bridge, full bridge, or waterfall. Just listen to your body. We're going to hold for three more. Tuck and lift. Once your feet are down, of course, or your feet are slid back if you straighten it. You can roll it down out of bridge. Roll to your right side and slowly come up. But you're going to need your bolster. <clears throat> so, Beth, curious. How was the twist on your back? It was okay on that. It's okay on your back. I think you may need to return to that one. So I'm not sure how your knee will do in this twist. Yeah. So, or if you know another twist that you prefer, you can do that. The one that we're going to do with the bolster, it's going to line up next to the right hip. Now, some people like to stack the knees. I prefer them staggered. But you can also put a blanket in between. But we're going to lift up, twist towards the prop, and then lower down on it. So your navel is face down, your chest is face down, and then you just have to explore. Because each day is different. What side of my face is going to work best for my neck? the rest of the vertebrae. Once you discover which side fits the bill, close the eyes, surrender into the prop, and this one we're going to hold.
And slide the hands in, push down to the palms, slowly lift. It's two sided, so basically just turn the body the other direction, bring that blanket with if you want it between the legs. Make sure you extend upward before rotating and spilling down. Whichever cheek you resided on before, you want to flip to the other.
bend the hands closer, push down through the palms, come up. Bring the bowls to front. We'll be able to do this one. Um, I'll get you a bowl to so you don't get up. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to take the legs over. You can also do stomach if you prefer that one. I uh, thought we could land here and wrap the legs up with a blanket. So it looks like this. Do you want this one? Mm -hmm. Time getting into position. I'm going to change out the music. And what I'd like you to do for Shavasana today. Just to breathe your way into a state of bliss. You concentrate upon your breath and breathing into that state of bliss. You'll be able to slow down the mind in that way. When you slow down the mind in that way, you might just get your own vision. Something that may hold symbols or symbology. So anything that might appear, see it as being significant. It's just the mind rambling, chatting away. Just to turn away from that storyline. Returning to the breath as many times as you need to.
Hopefully you found that blissful state to desire. Continue to cling to your breath. Start to reactivate the body somehow, some way. To activate some movement, we can begin to exit this position, finding your way to a comfortable seat, however that translates to you in the now. To find a comfortable seat. And we all walk away from this practice with more fluid and peace in our bodies, hearts, and minds. So much for being here today. You're welcome. So when I was at your knee, working on your knee, I usually ask for a Hindu beauty on the right hand. I asked for it on the knee. And it was Shiva dancing the dance of ecstasy, which was really cool. When I worked the grounding line of your feet, it was interesting because they're it is problems of surgery, but the ground and legs are so different between your left and right side that that makes sense. I'm glad you. I was trying to remind myself to give it to you when you come back. Mm -hmm.